I feel like kitchen rentals are always a great investment because really that's what people look for if you are selling your home. They wanna look at your kitchen and they wanna see that it's up to date, it's functional, there's lots of cabinet space. Joanna and Eric are a young family. They have two kids and they've lived here for a while, but their kitchen was very non-functional. And I think it had been renovated in the early 2000s. And when I say renovated, that's a very generous way of putting it. There was one run of countertop that was, I think, eight feet long in total. Also included the stove and the sink. The biggest problem in the space was definitely the layout. It was very challenging because the stairs to the basement crossed the house at a 90 degree angle. So they cut up the room in half and they came out about halfway through the center of the room. It felt like two small choppy rooms. There was a tiny kitchen at the back with a small eating area and a little powder room off of it. They brought me in because they had big ideas about how they wanted it to look and feel, but they really weren't sure how they were gonna achieve that. When we started out, the first thing we did, which is the first thing we do with all our projects, is to do a complete measure and then draw a million different versions of the plan. And one of the things we tried was, what happens if we flip the stairs 90 degrees so that they're running lengthwise along the house? And it really helped us a lot. It gave us so many more options for the layout and it gave them the open kitchen dining room that they wanted. There was a window that was existing that actually previously had been in the living room that was high and wide and we thought that would be great if the sink was under it. So we kind of started, okay, because then we can do a deep ledge and if that was the sink, what goes where? What I love about this house is the detailing on the windows I find adds a lot of warmth. It feels kind of French bistro, a little warm, a little bit aged, but also contemporary at the same time. We picked the counter traps pretty early on. My clients, Joanna and Eric, were very decisive, which I love. They both immediately said, we love this countertop. It has movement to it. It doesn't look like stone, which they liked that it just looked like it was its own thing. And it is a light gray, but it has some taupey veining through it, which keeps it on the grayy side. We knew we wanted slab wood cabinetry and we wanted it to not match the floors, but go, which I think is always really nice. I either feel like it's either bang on or it's different. So we were focused on keeping the tone similar, but slightly darker on the cabinetry and a heavier grain. We knew we wanted lots of sconces and different lighting because as much as this is the kitchen, this is a hangout space. Thought a lot about the oversized light in the dining room because the round dining table is so large. It was important that there was something that had enough impact that wasn't gonna be dwarfed. And I think the drama of the oversized shade is really interesting and catches your eye and really creates this warm, cozy, enveloping space in the banquet. And why a banquet here? <sighs> Always a banquet, we go. Well, number one, because it saves a ton of space. If we just had a round table here, the same size table would have to be pulled out a lot further to have enough room to get behind it. Number two, storage underneath it. Although there's no hardware, they're all touch latch drawers, so there's storage all along the bottom. Um, number three, comfort. Sitting in a dining chair is all fine and good, but sitting on a banquette is way more comfortable. It's like a couch. We make our banquettes generally 24 inches deep with a sloped back. So you can sit cross-legged on it, you can sit with your back against it and your legs out in front of you. So it means the space is much more versatile. We ended up with this space between the kitchen and the dining room and we didn't want them to merge because A, it felt like we didn't need more kitchen. And then B, especially if we were thinking this isn't just a casual dining room, this is also dining room all the time, guest dining room, we wanted it to be a little more elegant. So with that in mind, we thought, would there be something useful? I mean, we're big believers in what we call the old command center, kind of a spot on the main floor to dump mail, keys, charge phones. I don't know about you guys, but kids get a lot of paperwork from school. Joanna and Eric have two kids. There's always papers coming home that we lose all the time. But this is kind of a spot that all that stuff gets collected. It's just a middle of the road spot that everything gets dumped that you know where to find stuff. Powder room was there before? Yes, the powder room was there before, but it didn't look like that. It looked gross. Yeah, it wasn't ideal. We clad the walls in a grass cloth, which I love. It's actually a vinyl grass cloth. So it protects the walls, it's wipeable, great with kids, but gives it a little bit of interest and texture in a subtle way. And then we put a little tiny corner sink in there, but we kept it really simple. I mean, space-wise, it doesn't take up a ton of space. In a perfect world, I would not have the door to the powder room near anything. But in this case, this was the only way that it would work. And it was more important to have the powder room than to not have it. They moved back in a few months ago and they have been loving it. Before their spaces were so separate 
and cooking was a real chore. And now Joanna, Eric, Max, and Theo have space to hang out as a family and really enjoy the light from their backyard. 